The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. What is the difference in the saving message before the cross and after the cross? And what about people who never heard about Jesus? This is Grace in Focus, and we thank you for listening. Grace in Focus is the radio broadcast and podcast ministry of the Grace Evangelical Society. We're located in North Texas, and you can find out more about us by going to our website, faithalone.org. You can find our daily blogs there, thousands of articles we've written, and other resources. That's faithalone.org. Now with today's question and answer discussion, here are Bob Wilkin and David Renfro. David, I have a question here from Jeff, and Jeff is asking, what is the difference between believing Jesus before his death, for example, uh, the Gospel of John, versus us who are after his death believing in Jesus. And so Jeff goes on and says, in other words, those before the cross believed he was who he said he was, and they believed his promise of salvation, of everlasting life. But he says, those of us after the cross Are we to also believe that he died on the cross for us, along with his offer to believe that he's the Savior? And he says, sorry if this sounds weird or confusing. I guess I'm just curious as to the difference between pre-cross believers and post-cross believers. So here's what I would say to Jeff. There's only one saving message. Mm -hmm. It started in Genesis 3.15, and it goes to Revelation Mm 22.17. And that's whoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ has everlasting life and will never be condemned. It's not like there was a different message before and after the cross. Now, when Jeff points out, do we also need to believe after the cross that he died on the cross for our sins and rose bodily from the dead— The answer is, those are not the bullseye. Right. The bullseye is everlasting life to all who believe in Jesus for that life. Jesus is the giver of the gift of everlasting life, John chapter 4 and verse 10 and verse 14. What the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus are is proof— that the promise of everlasting life to the believer is true. Mm -hmm. Now, I think what Jeff is asking is, hypothetically, could someone in this age be born again without believing that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose again? Doesn't that seem like what he's asking? Yeah, I think he's kind of in the same boat as a lot of people that, and I'll use the Francis Schaeffer word, what proposition do we need to believe? I like that. Um, that. That's where we, I think a lot of confusion is coming in on this issue. There's the proposition that Jesus will give us everlasting life on the basis of our belief in him. Right. Others will say, well, no, that's not the only proposition. You have to believe that he died on the cross. He couldn't have died by a heart attack. He has right. to die on the cross. With shedding his blood. Right. If you believe that he died having a heart attack, then you're not saved. You know, or you have to believe that he died on the cross. He rose again. Yeah. Okay. He was, oh, no, he was buried physically. Right. And then he physically rose from the grave. So, you know, if I don't believe those propositions, in other words, it's a bunch of propositions. Right. There's only one proposition in view with Jesus, and that is, I will give you everlasting life the minute you, the second you believe that I will. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's important to recognize here that before the cross, and this is seems to be Jeff's point, there were people who did not believe Jesus was going to die on the cross, mm-hmm. and they didn't believe he was going to rise from the dead, and yet they were born again. Mm-hmm. I think we call them the apostles. That's a good word, yeah. Right? The 12 disciples, all but Judas, right. and Matthias in, in Acts 1 took his place. 
They all believed in Jesus right. for everlasting life. Mm-hmm. John 2.11 says his disciples believed in him. And mm-hmm. according to John 3.16, whoever believes in him will not perish, but has everlasting life. Right. So we know his believing disciples were born again. But we also know from John chapter 6 that there were some of his disciples that did not believe. John 6.64. Mm-hmm. Judas was one of those. But the point is, if they believed in him, they had everlasting life, even though in Matthew 16, when Jesus says, I'm going to Jerusalem to suffer and die, Mm -hmm. Peter says, God forbid it, Lord, that'll never happen to you. Well, Peter was born again. Mm -hmm. So the question is, can a person today be born again in the same way? And my answer would be yes, but it's exceedingly unlikely And the reason it's exceedingly unlikely is we don't have the advantage they had in the first century. They saw Jesus face to face. Mm -hmm. They heard him teach in person. They saw him raise the dead and heal the sick. Mm -hmm. We have none of those advantages. No, we weren't physically there. We weren't physically there. So it seems to me it's much harder. But having said that, isn't it possible That a child, let's say a seven or eight year old child could hear mom and dad talking about that. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you are going to be with him forever and you will be saved and you will never go to hell. A child might believe that and yet not yet have understood that Jesus died and rose again. Or the full implications of all that. Yeah. Just jumping in here to make you aware of our magazine, Grace in Focus. It is a bi-monthly, six issues per year, 48-page magazine, full color. And we want you to subscribe by emailing your name and your snail mail address to ges at faithalone.org. The subscription is free. It can be accessed electronically or it can be actually physically sent to you if you live in the lower 48 United States. That's our Grace and Focus magazine. Send your name and snail mail address to ges at faithalone.org. What if a person believes that Jesus died on the cross for their sins, but they don't believe he died by shedding his blood? They do believe he died on the cross Mm -hmm. and he had a heart attack, and that's why they didn't break his legs, and so he died for us. Well, would that be sufficient? Not if you have to have the shedding of blood, right? In fact, when they pierce his side with the sword, with the spear, I mean, Mm -hmm. and what comes out is water and blood, Mm -hmm. this suggests that his heart had ruptured. He died because he shed his blood. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just dying of a heart attack on the cross. No. Well, what if a person believed he died on the cross, but they didn't believe the right way? Or, for example, there's about five different views of the atonement. Some people say it was a ransom to Satan. That God paid a ransom to Satan. That's not substitutionary atonement. No. That's wrong, but you might believe that. That assumes Satan is in control of everything. And what about people who believe that Jesus rose spiritually from the dead? Well, that's wrong, Mm -hmm. but would that be sufficient? I would say, no, that's incorrect, but that's not a condition of everlasting life. The only condition of everlasting life is that we believe in Jesus for it, for everlasting life. Mm -hmm. We believe his promise of everlasting life. So, Jeff, this is a really good question, but the message didn't change after the cross. It's not like before the cross, the message was John 3.16, and after the cross, it's John 3.16 plus the rest of the New Testament. And it's still John 3.16. The question is, what does it take to get you there? When Zane Hodges spoke on how to lead a person to Christ— He said that the bullseye is not the death and resurrection of Jesus, but he went on to say, I consider it essential to preach the death and resurrection of Jesus in order to get people to believe the promise of life. That's the fact that he did die, physically die, physically was buried, and physically rose from... Those are the reasons why we can believe in him for everlasting life, because he conquered death. Yeah, and they are prime reasons why we should believe his promise of life. Uh Okay, I think we have time, David, for one other question. Who's the other question from? From Mike, and he says, I've heard it taught that Romans one twenty is a supporting scripture that explains how mankind is held accountable with knowing there is a creator God and mankind is without excuse in acknowledging it. 
Therefore, many people throughout history have been held accountable to seeing these evidences of God's existence and rejecting it. So how are they held accountable for not believing if they never heard about Jesus and his promise? Sure, they knew and saw evidences of God, but they never heard a message of a coming Messiah or the gospel. Okay, would you read Romans one twenty? Romans one twenty. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Yeah, so they are without excuse. Now, I remember when I was on staff with Campus Crusade for Christ, the big question would be, what about the heathen in Africa? Mm Mm-hmm. Today, the believers in Africa are talking about, what about the heathen in the United States? Yeah. <laughs> but, but back then, we were taught that our answer should be, whatever God does for those people will be fair. But you've heard about Jesus, so what are you going to do? Are you going to believe in him, or are you not going to believe in him? Well, I don't like that answer because it's kind of a dodge. It's a legitimate question. Uh, I recently read someone who said that he believed it would be unfair of God to condemn anyone to hell who had never heard about Jesus. And this is a person from within the free grace camp. I would call this person flexible free grace. And in fact, I got a chance to talk to him later, and I said, well, what about someone who heard the name of Jesus, but they never heard the clear faith alone message? He said, oh yeah, those people too would be given everlasting life after they die. So it's not just the people who've never heard about Jesus. It would be anyone that's not heard a clear saving message. My answer would be to Mike that Romans 1.20 says that people without excuse, and if you think it's unfair of God to condemn people to eternal separation from him and his kingdom because they didn't believe in his son even though they never heard about Jesus, then you need to get your thinking in line with Scripture. The point of Romans 1.20 is... If people respond to the light they have, God's going to give them more light. And ultimately, they are going to hear about Jesus, and they are going to hear the clear saving message. So no one is excusable. Mm -hmm. You have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in order to be saved. Of course, I'm excluding those who've died before the age of accountability, and I'm excluding those who don't have the mental capacity to believe. But with all people who live beyond the age of accountability and who have normal mental capacity, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in order to be saved, Mm -hmm. Acts 16, 31. Mm -hmm. And so, Mike, if it doesn't seem fair to you, well, I'm sorry, but God thinks it's fair. And God's the one who determines what's good and bad, and he's the one that determines what's just and unjust. And so because God is drawing all... Therefore, all are accountable for responding to the light they have. Mm -hmm. I hope that helps. And remember, let's keep Keep grace grace in focus. We invite you to check out our Monday, Wednesday, and Friday five-minute YouTube videos at YouTube Grace Evangelical Society. You will love the content and learn a lot. There are a lot of costs involved in staying on the air. That's why we so much appreciate our financial partners. If you'd like to learn how to become one, you can find out more by going to faithalone.org. On the next episode, what is the relationship between faith and certainty? Please join us, and until then, let's keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.